Hi, my name is Felix Kremer and I'm now going to show you how to use recurrence quantification analysis to detect deforestation in Sentinel-1 data. For that, we're going to look at what is a recurrence plot, what parameters are important for the computation of recurrence plots, and then we're also going to look at example data of Sentinel-1 in Hidalgo in Mexico to look at actual deforestation areas. Hidalgo is a temperate forest area in central Mexico. We used Pleiad data to derive deforestation areas from different years and we're now going to look at example deforestation areas and see what we can detect with recurrence quantification analysis. This work was published as Potential of Recurrence Metrics from Sentinel-1 Time Series for Deforestation Mapping. In this tutorial, we're going to look at three different um, time series that are um, indicative of uh, time series you could also see in Sentinel-1 data. The first one is a step function with noise. Here we can um, select the mean of the first step to either decrease or increase the um, cliff between the uh, different parts of the time series. Um, then we're looking at the sum of two sine waves, which give um, nice interference patterns. And here we can select the different uh, phase differences. And then we're also looking at the sign with an overlaid trend. And here we can select the difference in the slope of the trend to either have a very strong st slope or or rather a slow, uh, slow slope. So what is a recurrence plot? Um, the recurrence plot is a um, comparison of the time series against itself. So on every um, pixel in this plot, we compare one time step on this axis with the other time step on this axis and um, apply some simil similarity me measure. And the similarity is um, guided by this threshold. So um, if the pixel values are similar up to this given threshold, they are taken as similar, so they are indicated by a black dot. And you have the main diagonal, which is every time step against itself, which is always black. And then um, you have different uh, sub-diagonals and you have you can have different patterns and this depends on the function you're um, looking at. So, and it also um, depends on the threshold. So for example, if you increase the threshold, more pixels are taken as similar and the darker your um, recurrence plot is going to get. And if we're looking at the step function with noise, you can see if you increase the threshold level, um, up to a certain amount, you can uh, distinguish these different um, boxes. This is just the part where the noise is up there and then it, it's going down and then um, you're switching to the other um, black qu quadrant. And um, for the function with overlay trend, you see that the density of the recurrence plots are um, decreasing through the edges because the um, similar similarity decreases because the slope um, takes away uh, parts that are, could be similar. But um, so we see if we increase the slope, the density also um, decreases. Now, um, these um, recurrence plots are just uh, visual um, analysis tools, but we can also use uh, recurrence quantification analysis on the recurrence plot. So we are computing um, different uh, metrics from that. For example, the recurrence rate metric, which is just the number of black dots in the recurrence uh, plot. And um, we see here a plot of the recurrence rate against the threshold. So this is um, strictly increasing 
because the more the higher the, the threshold, more pixels are taken as similar. And this is basically the same for all different uh, parameters of the input function. Um, but then we can also look at the um, trend metric. This is just the relationship of the um, number of pixels on a diagonal and the distance of this diagonal to the main diagonal. So what do I mean by that? Here we see on the main diagonal, we have all black dots, but then on this sub diagonals like this, there are a few more, more points than on these diagonals because the, um, we have this trend relationship. And um, the ACOR trend is just a correlation between the, this distance to the main diagonal and the number of points on, on the dia diagonal. And in the end, it means just um, a relationship between the temporal distance between two time steps we are um, comparing and the number of uh, time steps with this distance that are taken as similar. Here we see that um, the accurate trend metric has a U form in the, um, against the threshold, because if the threshold is too high, too many points are just taken as similar, because they're just all taken as uh, similar in the end. So if you um, change the slope of the trend, you can see that um, you have a slight shift of this uh, minima. But if you also look at the step function with noise, for example, which is especially relevant for the detection of deforestation, you can see that this also depends on the distance between these different um, step functions. And also where, where is the local minima here? Now we're looking at um, recurrence plots of Sentinel-1 data. We're looking at the Edigo data set um, for VV and VH in ascending and descending orbits. Um, and here we see the comparison of the stable forest and the deforested areas. And um, in VH ascending, we see a clear drop of the uh, signal. Um, during the deforestation, but then um, the signal is coming back up again on similar levels as um, the stable forest. And the stable forest is just um, very similar, except for some noise um, during the whole um, time period. And we also see this in the um, recurrence plots. And here we have a similar behavior than in the um, uh, example function, uh, example step function with noise, um, that we have four distinct quadrants um, with two rather dark ones and two rather um, bright ones. And um, here we're not looking at only one recurrence plot, but we're looking at all recurrence plots of all 25 pixels that are plotted above. And um, you can also see that if you increase the threshold value, you can um, make it more clear what is the um, time of the deforestation or when is, when is it detectable by uh, recurrence quantification analysis. And then um, you can also look at the different orbits and see that in descending, this drop is not as clear and um, also in VV, there's not, not, a, not such a clear drop in the deforestation. And um, now we also want to look at this spatially. Um, for that, we're looking at the um, reference data. The red one is a deforested area that we detected using Pleiad data, it, the deforestation happened between July 2017 and July 2018. And the green one is stable forest area of the same size. And um, we 
Außer compared die um, recurrence quantification analysis to the percentile range. The percentile range is just the difference between the 95th percentile and the 5th percentile, which is basically a, um, a range of the, this is the range of the uh, values of the time series, um, except for few outliers. And um, here we see um, VV descending, which is not that, there's nothing clearly visible. A little bit going on, but then in in ascending you see this uh, triangle here, which is similar to the deforestation area. But then in VH you can also see some not as bright areas as this one before, but very similar values. This is um, a deforestation area that happened a year earlier, and then if we look at the recurrence quantification trend, we can also see these clear patterns um, of the deforested area and, the, and there's another small deforestation. But then you can also look at the VV and um, on the descending patterns and that they are not um, as clearly visible. And um, you could then also play around a bit with the um, different thresholds and see that, um, for example, if you increase the, the threshold, the forest areas are getting a little bit smoother, so you're not detecting as much um, noise as you would have um, with a lower um, threshold. To wrap up, um, we showed how to use uh, recurrence quantification analysis trend to detect deforestation using Sentinel-1 data. For the detection of deforestation areas in a single year, this is similarly good as the percentile range, and it also detects the year of the de deforestation because it doesn't uh, confound it as much with uh, older deforestations. And now, um, have fun exploring this tutorial on your own by using the notebooks that are provided. Yes.